This video is about principles of graph construction. In graph construction, there is a general strategy with two bullet points, clear vision and clear understanding. And the general strategy of graphing, also tabulating data, is that it is iterative, designed to answer three questions. What is the message? Does this message need a graph or a table? And if so, what form of the graph or table is best to convey this message? Clear vision is all about highlighting the data. And highlighting the data has two parts. Reducing the stuff that is non-data, called non-data ink, and enhancing the stuff that is data, data ink. Reducing non-data ink is about subtracting stuff you don't need, avoiding superfluity, or more popularly called chart junk, and regularizing and de-emphasizing remaining non-data ink. The important parts are looking at a grid, if you put it on your graph, whether you really need it, and looking at the stuff that is in your data rectangle, where the data resides, and just surrounding that, what is called the scale line rectangle that contains the axis, the axis labels, the ticks, etc. Here's an example of a simple column graph on the first try out of one of my graphic packages. You see that the graph is very busy with error bars and a thick frame around the data, thick tick marks, and a huge legend. And here is what happens after I redesign the graph. I've kept the frame but made all the lines very thin and also the ticks and tick marks. I have taken away the frame around each of the columns so that you only see colors. I've taken away half of the error bars and I've taken away the whiskers on top of the error bars. So now the data is much more clear than in the first version of the graph. Here's another example, in this case, a line graph, which was actually an example file in one of my graphic programs. It looks very glitzy, made for presentation. It has a hard brushed steel background, a very strongly prominent grid, and labels alongside the lines that are white with a shadow background, and they are very hard to read. You will also notice that the X labels are diagonal, and that the Y axis label is vertical, which makes it hard to read. Here's what happened after redesign. I've taken away the background, I've put the y-axis label on top of the graph and made it larger. I've made the tick labels bold and the same format, also horizontal. I've strongly de-emphasized the grid and I've made the text of the text labels black on a colored background that matches the lines of each of the series, making them much easier to read. After looking at the grid and the data rectangle, there's work to be done on what we call the scale line rectangle, that is the rectangle surrounding the data. And you want that scale line rectangle to be as uncluttered as possible. So you have to look at your tick marks, the number of tick marks and labels. You have to look at whether you need a grid or not and how it looks. You have to look at your legend, whether you really need a legend in your graph and you have to look at the notes that may be placed on the graph to bring out important elements of the data. Now let's move to the data. We want the data to stand out because the data are the most important message on the graph. So we want to enhance the data ink. I've already told you that to do that, you have to subtract those parts of the data that are not really necessary. And then we go to the emphasizing of the remaining data ink. The most important part there is to use visually prominent graphical elements to show the data. And the tools you can use are on this slide. 
Apart from using prominent graphical elements, you also make sure that all these elements remain visible. So you have to try to avoid as much as possible that your data or series overlap. The symbols must be visually distinguishable and data sets must be readily visually assembled into one set that belongs together. Let me show you an example of that in a scatter plot. This scatter plot was made in a popular statistical program. Even though the data is readable, you can see that there's lots of problems with this graph. For one thing, there is a gray background which reduces the contrast of your data. The data elements are very small and there is a lot of overlap, which means that a lot of points are actually in the same place. Now that is not only a problem of the plot, that is also a problem of the data. If there's too many points in one place, it becomes very difficult to tell them apart by any technique. So first what I did is import the data into one of my graphical programs and just simply plot the points, make the data elements more prominent by making the points bigger and plotting them on one scale and seeing what happens. So this is just my first try. As you can see, the problems with overlap remain, but the individual data elements, at least on the edges, have become more visible because they are larger and the background has disappeared. But now for the next step, how do we reduce the overlap that occurs around zero? What I did involved some major axis surgery. I redesigned the x-axis around the zero. It's a double exponential scale, so from zero to one to two to four, etc., it's an exponential on the positive, and likewise, it's an exponential on the negative. And that means that the area around the zero is hugely magnified over the edges. And now you can see that there is still overlap around zero, but you start to begin to see the individual data elements, especially because I've now opened the circles up so that you can better see individual circles. Also, I've added a text label at the bottom to tell you how many observations there are actually on that point to give you an impression of how many little circles have been drawn, even though they overlap. In the final step, I put in some shading to replace the horizontal lines in the original plot. Then there's one more thing in clear vision, a very important point. Your graph must survive reduction and reproduction that goes on in the processing stage after your work has been accepted. That means you have to critically look at your background, your grayscales, your symbol size, and the contrasts in your graph to make sure that the graph looks as good printed as when you designed it. Let's move to clear understanding. Clear understanding is about telling a story. Your graph has to tell a story, and that means that you have to organize the data so that it tells a story. Several steps here. You have to group the data, which means segmenting them into meaningful subsets, and if you go to the table lectures, there are some Gestalt principles that I talk about. After grouping, you have to prioritize the data using your visual cues, sequence the data, make sure that the data reads from left to right, from top to bottom, that you have labels that are in sequence, and that, if necessary, you graph the data more than once to make your point clear. Let's have one more look at sequence. Sequence is really a very important thing in plots. You have to think about the order that you present your data. So if we go to the example of labels, categorical graphs, you don't label them as you would a telephone book, but you label them according to the important signal that is in your data. So if we have a look at this dot plot, which is the rheumatology journals ranked by impact factor. Impact factor is the important ordering factor. Usually we want to know which journal comes on top and which one is on, on the bottom. But if you think 
that it is important, especially if the list becomes long, that the reader is also able to look up a specific journal, then you would plot this data again in alphabetical order. The final point in clear understanding is integrating the role of text. There's not just the graph, there's also the explanatory labels, there's placement of text, and most importantly, the figure caption or legend, the text legend that comes under or beside your graph and is not part of the graph itself. The text of that legend is often not looked at very closely, so it's not as comprehensive and as informative as it could be. Also, that is the place where you explain the graph elements and one of the most important parts are the error bars that are often plotted but not explained. And that brings us to the end of this video on the principles of graph construction.